you all will be eagerly waiting for what is the key for today. And we know that Law Excellence, as every year, also has released its key for the whole, I mean, we are the first to release the key. And it has got uh, challenges on both the sides. We can claim that we have released the key for first. At the same time, the speed can bring in some error. We did it in two phases. First phase, we marked the key. Second, we subjected it to the verification by our teachers. In spite of that, in the third verification by myself, I found one or two differences. So I say differences rather than mistakes because different teachers have their different explanations to it. So that's why I am using that particular point. So now our job is to discuss what is the right answer for each question and each question will be discussed in detail by the subject experts. Already I have made the polity video. Geography teacher has made D.B. Kumar sir who was my teacher, he made the video. And economy teacher is doing, Malishwari ma'am is doing on current affairs and Sinaya sir is doing on history. The video making is going on simultaneously in Hyderabad and Bangalore. Now, I want all the students to sit focused and understand the question paper because many of you might not have appeared for the exam but still understanding the question paper has to be is very important and critical for the people who are going to take the exam in the consequent years. So let's come, why these questions are being asked by UPSC? Can we bring in a reason? So first is, there are A, B, C, D sets. For every 10 questions across the sets, the questions are expected to change. So let's take the first question in set A, which we are discussing now, is the 41 question in set B, 91 question in set C, 71 question in set D. Am I clear? First is 41, 91, 71. So, if you are correcting yourselves, please go through those particular keys. The first question is a statement based question. The Governor of Reserve Bank of India is appointed by the central government. Yes, the Prime Minister along with the Minister of Finance recommendations, he makes the decision. Certain provisions of Constitution of India, see, all the powers of RBI are derived from RBI Act, not from the Constitution. So that's why they want to make a small difference to you here stating that confusion. Is it getting its powers from Constitution or from the statutory or some law? That's what they are looking at. So what is the source of authority to RBI? The governor, governor of RBI draws his powers from RBI Act. So in current affairs, we have this autonomy of RBI as a discussion when Raghuram Rajan left RBI, when Urjit Patel left RBI. So, and then many deputy governors also have left RBI. So that's why in that context, this particular question is given. So in the means, how this question can come up as, are the institutions really autonomous in India? So there is a famous saying by, I mean, former RBI governor, Y.V. Rao, what he said is, um, so, RBI is really independent. I just took the finance minister's permission to say this word. That was the sarcasm which he played, why we wrong, if I'm not wrong. Now, coming back to the second question. So, with reference to casual workers. Now here, all casual workers are entitled. So, who are entitled for employees provident fund? Anyone who is earning less than 15,000 rupees is eligible for that. So that's why as all is been given, I have a doubt with regard to this. So I am worried because all is been given. All only, these are the two wrong words in our question paper which we can mark as wrong statements. All uh, casual workers are entitled for regular working hours. Then regular working hours like office job 9 to 5 it was given, it do not come under the casual defin workers definition itself. And then the government can by a notification specify that an establishment or industry pay wages only through its bank accounts. Yes, this is 100% true because this has become controversial when government wants to insist on bank payments. So that's where government said we are also going to allow the cash payments. But government has authority to decide on that. Third statement is absolutely right. But we have to decide one and two statements which are which is going to be right over here. So. In the answers, third is there, but what is the answer which we have to go for? Either one and three or two and three. 
So all casual workers are entitled for employees provident fund. So that is all is wrong over here. Second, all casual workers regular working hours. So the working hours of casual workers is an agreement between the labor and the person. So what is the definition of regular? It's very subjective. So that's why we chose the answer 2 and 3. 15,000 rupees is a number. It cannot be changed. So as it is subjective, we went for that. I have asked my brother-in-law's company to HR to look into this question. I may change the answer if once I get clarity on this. Now, let us go to the next question. That is the third question. Which, who among the following most likely to be taken at the time of economic recession? You know, cyclical measures and counter-cyclical measures. Whenever recession is there, you have to put more money into the pockets of the people. So in that case, increase in expenditure is essential. So make loans cheaper, increase the public expenditure. So cut the tax rates. These three steps are been taken. If you see these three steps, answer B is right in this context. Increase in public expenditure project C1 pattern. B and D exactly opposite. Either this or that can be an answer. When they have given exactly two opposite choices to us, obviously the answer will be lying between those two because either this have to be right or that has to be right. So that is a foolish way of giving a question by UPSC. The third is B. Consider the following statements about supply. So here it is about uh, supply and demand. When the demand increases, obviously when price falls, demand increases. Four has to be completely right. And then complement, let's take software and hardware if you are buying a computer. And software cost has increased. It means the whole product which you are going to use has become costlier. So when the cost increases, demand comes down. And when the money of the people have increased, people will not buy inferior goods. They go for quality goods, excellent goods. So that's why second and third statements are wrong. Substitute, let's take, um, I am using a bike. Now, a substitute, uh, cost has increased. Let's take, the cost of the bike has increased. Um, then obviously, I will not buy that. So another substitute's cost is increased and it appears to be cheaper. Then I buy more bikes. Or people buy more bikes. That's why 1 and 4 is the right answer. Urban cooperative banks, obviously they are uh, today regulated by RBI. If you know that particular point, you can uh, make the answer because the first statement is wrong itself. Uh, then among the choices which is there is 2 and 3 only. The government bond yields, I have marked this answer. Action of the United States Federal Reserve, it will have many indirect effect because it will influence the global markets like anything. And it also influences uh, the buyer's sentiment. And Reserve Bank of India, monetary policy, interest loans, all these also, interest rates, all these will affect the yields of the bond. That's why D is the answer. The seventh question is what? I am confused. And two people, A or C is the answer people has given. So I really do not know the answer for this. This can be A or C, economy teacher has given C. And my company secretary has given A as the answer. So that's what is C is the answer. I mean, we went with the C. The effect of devaluation of a currency, what will happen? Obviously, our, uh, see the question, it is very intelligently framed, this question. That is necessarily happen, which shall happen. Let's take in this, the third option is trade balance. So when devaluation happened, what will happen? Exports becomes cheaper. Imports becomes costlier. As we import more, trade balance becomes wider. So trade balance will not always become stronger. If our imports are more than exports, as imports are becoming costlier, trade balance is expected to go negative. And then the value of our currency, will it increase? No, that's what is the definition of devaluation, right? So second and third statements are wrong. Answer is one only. Which of the following effects of creation of black money in India has been main cause of worry? So all these are the causes of worry, but they are asking for what is the main cause of worry over here? See carefully, the main cause of worry. So unproductive activities, because when we have the black money, we invest in purchase of gold, etc., which do not go into production, which will not add to GDP, etc. So second is loss of revenue to the government, which government can redistribute, bring in welfare programs. So B and D, both are right answers to, I mean, so let's take A and B answers. More or less they are the same, A and B choices. 
So the unique choice is D, that's why I went with D for this particular question. Next is, which one of the following is likely to be the most inflationary in its effect? So if you are circulating the existing money, it is also inflationary. From banks, if you release it into people, that is inflationary. From private people, I mean, if money increases in public space, that is inflationary. The worst, again, this question is most inflationary. Which is the most inflationary? All these are inflationary. The most inflationary is creation of new currency. That is most inflationary. So these are the first 10 questions. So first 10 questions, what are they? In the B set, they are from 41 to 50. Set A, 1 to 10. Set B, 41 to 50. Set C, 91 to 100. Set D, they are from 71 to 80. Now I am going to the 11th question. We are going to the 11th question now. So are we clear? Hope you are going through. From 11th question in set A is 31st question in set B, 81st question in set C and set D it is 61st question. You can download this particular document from the attachment in other videos or below this video. In this channel itself it is attached to you. You can download this attachment and look into these questions. Now if you have got different sets you can go through those particular different sets. 11 set A, 31 set B, 81 set C, 61 set D. So let's go through these questions, 11. So money multiplier in an economy, in, the, in an economy increases with which one of the following? So obviously increase in the banking habit of the people, it will multiply the money available with the formal institutions. That's why answer is C. With reference to Indian economy, demand pull inflation can be caused or increased by which of the following? So what is meant by demand pull? The money in the pockets of the people have to attract the investment, attract that particular inflation. Expansionary policies, fiscal stimulus, rising interest rates, all these are demand pull side. You have cost push and demand pull. So that's why the answer is A. Let's go to 13th question. With reference to India, consider the following statements. So for the 13th question, so again, these will be discussed in detail by your economy teacher. For now, go through the answer, 13th question, that is B. And then 14th, water credit. With regard to water credit, the answer is C, the 14th question. So now I will speed it up. I will give you the answers, please go through them. And you can go through individual question explanation as we go forward. So the 14th question is related to water credit. So you know, microfinance is very much in the news. So in this case, the water credit is a related to microfinance. So this is also part of our current affairs question. So the major part of this is, uh, the poor people shall be able to meet their water needs uh, without depending on subsidies. So one way, the government wants to decrease the subsidy burden, and on the other way, it shall not hurt the basic necessities of the people, because water is a basic need and a basic right of the citizens. In that context, water credit and microfinance solutions have come over there. That is the answer for this question. With regard to 14, answer is C. 15, central banks function as the lender of the last resort. It's a very easy question. What is the lender of the last resort mean? What does that mean? So liquidity, whenever the banking crisis comes up to maintain the liquidity, the RBI will come into picture. And also lender of last resort for every institution in India. R2 code of practices, these are related to electronics recycling. The answer is A. 17. So copper smelting, here again we have got a issue, a debatable point. They release lethal quantities. What is the definition of lethal quantities? Every smelting releases carbon monoxide. They may release. So that's why we finally included one in the option by seeing this word, they may release. The word is, they may release. They will release lethal quantities. It means, how much quantity is called lethal? There is no classification in this. So as they have said, they may release. Every smelting releases carbon monoxide into environment. They may release. That's why we have included point 0.1 also in the discussion over here. And then, let's go to the 18th question. With reference to furnace oil, consider the following statements. Um, it is a product of oil refineries. Some industries use it to generate power. And it causes sulfur emissions into environment. That's why it is being discouraged. So especially Meghalaya and Assam, it has got a problem. So answer is D. What is blue carbon? 
So blue means what? Water, water bodies. The carbon which is captured into oceans, that is what is blue carbon, answer is A. In the nature, which of the following are most likely to be found in surviving on the surface without soil? So it means which can live without the support of the soil? What is the answer? Lichens and also Moses. And then 21st question. Preparing a natural mosquito repellent, many of the times, even when in our Gayatri campus we used to grow this, the lemongrass, people say it's a natural mosquito repellent. And that is the answer is C. So, but again, verify this answer with, with regard to other options we haven't verified. Lemongrass is the answer according to us. And consider the following kinds of organisms which are in the food chain, primary producers in the food chain, which prepare their own food. So, cyanobacteria. They have, the, I mean, these are also called blue-green algae, if I'm not wrong. I mean, blue-green algae kind of thing. They have bacteria in that blue-green algae is living. Some symbiotic relationship is there. That's why they are being called primary producers and diatoms. Next, consider the following animals. Captured by predators, which of the above organisms roll up? It's a protective mechanism. So, which of the following organisms, 1 and 3 have the protect, protective mechanisms? Um, so, the science and technology teacher will talk about these questions. With regard to New York Declaration of Forests, which of the following statements is correct? See this question, 24th question. And this is New York Declaration on Forests. When it has occurred, I never saw in any of the current affairs on this. This kind of questions are very difficult to answer. But common sense comes into picture. So let's take, when this has come into question, let's take 2014, who remembers that particular year 2014? I don't know. So that's where this question is very difficult to answer because an year is given over here. And then, so obviously any declaration on forest, it will have a timeline, etc., to endorse something. And some obligations will be created. Now today, obligations are not just created, environment related obligations on governments alone, but also on private sector. So that's why four can be answered. But will they be legally binding? If you see Paris Climate Pact itself, uh, the governments are not intended for legally binding commitments. Uh, so they call them as IND, INDCs, intention or declared commitments or whatever it is. So legally binding commitments countries will never accept. If I go by that common sense, um, answer will be, I mean, four is going to be right. Only two options are there with regard to four, one, two, four, and three and four. Then in such a case, then uh, the third statement according to me is wrong. In that logic I go, answer is A. So this is how I try to answer these questions through elimination technique in the examination paper. Magnetite particles, sus I mean, suspected to be neurodegenerative neuro uh, disease causing elements, um, which where they pollute. For these kind of questions, your answer has to be always all the above. Which one of the following is a filter feeder? So, I mean, it's oysters. In case of the biogeochemical cycles, the weathering of rocks, the D.B. Kumar sir already has discussed this question. You can go through economy, that is geography paper, the phosphorus cycle. Or detrivores. So, answer this will be, I mean, explained to you. Our jellyfish is a dead treaty war or not was the discussion which we were making, but we have marked the answer as C. And many of the things, I am a specialist in polity, not in all the subjects. My major objective is to deliver the key to you and the respective teachers have the responsibility to give the things. The carbon-carbon metric supported by UNEP has been developed uh, for what is common carbon metric, CCM. It is carbon footprint, a concept is there. So carbon footprint means how much you are going to release the carbon. So today many of the bitcoins have come up, if you observe which are climate change related bitcoins, how much of the carbon footprint you are creating through your lifestyle. And based on that, you can, I mean, buy and give that particular things to the, I mean, community. So like this many systems, Nori is one such coin. In that context, carbon metric is nothing but carbon footprint related issue. Which of the following species that can establish symbiotic relationship? Symbiotic relationship means both of them have to sit together, live together with each other, all of them. Next is Chetustha Yogini Temple, uh, situated near Morina, consider the following statements. So it's a circular temple built during the reign of uh, uh, Kacha Pagata dynasty. And then it was meant to promote a Vaishnava cult. I mean, 
So yogini, so chau sat yogini, just if you can see the meaning of it, uh, you can eliminate the third option. So it is not the only circular temple. Whenever the statement only is there, we have to think twice. So answer we are going is C. Which one of the following ancient towns um, elaborate system of water harvesting? Obviously, this water harvesting systems, uh, Dola Vira. So Kalibangan, they got hars, uh, right like that. Roper, I think rice, if I'm not wrong. I mean, in the first quarter of the 17th century, in which of the following was were the factory factories of the East India Company located? Um, so answer is brooch. A is the answer. From the decline of Guptas until the rise of Harshavardhana in the early century, which of the following kingdoms were holding the power? So you know, between two major kingdoms, many small kingdoms were there. One is Guptas, Paramaras, and then Pushyabuktis, and then Maitrakas. These are the people. And Sinesar will deal in detail about this. The women in Vijayanagara Empire. So are they are good at soothsaying? So this is the difficulty. Sinesar said, yes, go with all the options. Soothsaying is also part of that. So then, I mean, we went with the answer D. Yes, in Vijayanagara Empire, women are good with uh, wrestling, astrology, accounts, sooth, accounting, soothsaying, and they have occupied most important positions in the uh, royal uh, the court. So Madanapalli in Andhra Pradesh. Now here, there is Rishi Valley School. Even today, if you go there, the place where Ms. Tagore, Guru has stayed, um, that is, uh, that building is still there today. So, in the Madanapalli, why it is it famous um, that uh, the star of South uh, North, it is called as, I mean, who is that? The philosopher, Jiddu Krishnamurti. His philosophy is driven in Madanapalli through Rishi Valley School. So, that's where Rabindran Tagore is the person who went there, that's why it is famous. And then consider, oh, one match the following question is there, D. So here, two and three are rightly matched. So that is terracotta art and uh, Ga I mean Ganeshwar, that is copper artifacts. Consider the following statements. So this is from the medieval India. During the reign of Iltutmish, that Chinggis Khan reached the Indus in pursuit of the few, I mean, this, this is very difficult to answer. So Chinggis Khan, he has ruled the world. So whatever the question related to Chinggis Khan, I mean, this, the, according to me, that's going to be right. One, consider the following statements. So now here, Saint Xavier, Francis Xavier did not die in India. He died in uh, China, if I'm not wrong. He died in China. There's a church in Goa, if, but he, the death of Xavier did not happen in India. So that's why answer one and three are right. And this is where 40th question, the senior sir said all the options, there is no right option for 40th question, but so due to one or the other discussion, the two we went through, but still answer is doubtful with regard to 40th question. With reference to the history of ancient India, Bhavabhuti, Hastimalla are famous for playwrights. Now consider the following statements. This is, I have changed the answer because my person has given answer as to the Government of India Act of 1935 gave women reserved seats in legislature. No. There were no reserved seats. There are only separate electorates. No reserved seats are being given. The reserved seats and separate electorates are different. So the reserved seats as a concept has come up after the Pune Pact. That is my logic when I kept neither one nor two as the answer. And with regard to first statement, voting rights to all women above the age of 21, these voting rights, it was left to the provinces. And the voting rights to women were not decided by this particular act. Who among the following is associated with the songs from prison? So from ancient Indian uh, uh, religious lyrics. It is Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi. So Gandhi has translated songs, I mean this religious lyrics, as songs from prison. Now medieval India, the ascending order of, in terms of size, ascending order, small to big. So Paragana is the, I mean small to big they are talking about. So Subedar is the highest. Paragana to Sarkar to Suba. Suba is the highest. That's why answer is A. The secretary with Hindu female school, and later known as Bethun female school, Ishwar Chandra Vidya Sagar. You know, he was the educationist. In the, I mean, he was the one. Widow, remarriage, all these things he has worked with. In the context of colonial India, Shah Nawaz Khan, Prem Kumar Sahagal, and Gurbak Singh 
all these are associated with indian national army subhash chandra bose colleagues they are and you know ina trials which are very famous and all the important leaders have participated in this ina trial to defend these uh, brave warriors which of the following with reference to indian history which of the following statements are correct so the nizamat of arcot emerged out of hyderabad state the mysore kingdom emerged out of vijayanagara empire yes these two are right now rohilkhand kingdom was formed out of the territories occupied by ahmed shah durrani so that is a wrong statement which one of the following statements is correct ajanta caves lie in the gorge of wagora river and if you go there you can see this now this has been again discussed to you as part of the geography there the explanation is clearly given next 50th question which of the following are correct 21st february is declared as the international mother language day by unicef now today unicef is very much worried about uh, death of the languages and uh, in india itself language is closely associated with culture that's why it was in the news and bangla to be one of the national languages so india do not have one single national language we have various official languages now so i mean was raised in the constituent assembly of pakistan yes this is a history point why if you take uh, east bangladesh bengali speaking population formed the east pakistan which is today's bangladesh in that constitution assembly that was the demand but remember the urdu speaking punjab province was dominant in pakistan politics uh, they did not uphold it and finally they have to pay heavy, heavy for that That's right so both one and two are the right answers so permaculture a uh, different from conventional chemical farming so we do this permaculture in moinabad i took my students to my farm over there so here see so conventional for i mean see conventional farming means you make the crop grow in bulk tomato crop or bang i mean whatever it is you grow in a scale in parma means permanent culture it is parma culture means you bring in the interplay between various crops so let us take in our this thing so we have a gradation so we create a symbiotic relationship between various crops and finally the once you make that particular form it give you returns continuously no you don't remove the crop and keep another crop so you make interdependency between the crops that is what is the permaculture practice of mulching let's take um, to save the water and uh, you mulching means you break that into small units and you keep it at the, at the roots uh, that's why constant absorption will be there the fourth is the right statement discourages monocultural practices yes now today for the scale what they do farmers do monocultural practices that's why it discourages monocultural practices that is right conventional chemical farming can cause an increased salinity of the soil yes obviously you are using minerals so sodium pot i mean potassium all these minerals what they are going to do increase the salinity conventional chemical farming is easily possible in semi arid regions but permaculture farming is not so possible in, no permaculture is possible everywhere just we have to enrich the soil with back, i mean with the fungus and other micro nutrients so the natural ways we have to enrich the soil earth warms everything so that's why third statement is wrong 1 2 4 are the right statements so this is the question which i like the most this year with reference to palm oil palm oil means southeast asia so with reference to palm oil what is the right answer so palm oil where we get it from malaysia most of the things are been imported uh, right so palm oil from that we also produce lipstick and other perfumes uh, so biodiesel palm oil is been diverted for the production of biodiesel so two and three statement are correct native to southeast asia no so today it has been widely cultivated in brazil so even amazon forests are being i mean uh, wiped off to do that so that's where the statement is wrong answer 2 and 3 only and then 53 with reference to indus river this is what is the question which has become a debate um, now answer finally we arrived here is chinab so chinab joins into i mean what is the satluj joins into chinab chinab joins into indus river so that's why answer is chinab with regard to reference to india didwana kuchman sargol kathu are the names of saline lakes and then consider the following rivers um, 
what they are asking over here which of the following ar arise from the eastern gods they have to arise from the eastern gods so you know that the brahmani and then uh, subarna reka they are not arriving from eastern gods they are flowing towards that side so answer is 2 and 4 and consider the following statements the Gen global ocean commission what is that question is commission grants licenses for seabed exploration and mining in the international waters now see is this global ocean commission no so answer is two and three for this next which of the following which one among the following which one is the least water efficient crop you know sugar cane is the least water efficient so if there is something called water budget so rice sugar cane these are the least water efficient crops now these are red gram pulses these all grow in the arid climate semi-arid regions so in the less water conditions also they grow the sugar cane that's what is the major controversy maharashtra is facing the water crisis but they are going with the water guzzling crops like sugar cane that's why it was in the news the 58th question is a conceptual question to you in geography this is explained to you in geography section by db kumar sir and then in the context of india's preparation for climate smart agriculture consider the following statements so 59th question so they are asking you for what is climate smart agriculture so there is right the climate smart village approach in india is a part of project led by climate change agriculture and food security yes yes that's what is the path an international research program is carried out un under consultative group on international agricultural research in headquartered in Fra france yes the international crops Act is the nodal agency in india yes so all these three are the right statements and then leaf litter decomposes faster than in any other biome and as a result the soil surface is often almost bare apart from these the vegetation is largely composed these are called reverse questions according to me they will explain a phenomenon they will expect you to identify the forest over there so here in this case the tropical rainforest is the answer vegetation of savanna so this is it with regard to various biomes uh, the econ uh, environment teacher will talk about that so answer is two that is fire and then grazing herbivores and then seasonal rainfall these are the things which are with the right answer so go with them that is c as the answer now 62 a second question answer is b the same 62 question sorry the same 62 question is 82 in uh, set b and 32 in set c and 22 in uh, set d now 63rd question moringa drumstick so today moringa is very much in the news for a few reasons because it is very rich in iron so moringa and a munukka right moringa leaves are very rich in iron so that's why many pregnant women are being given this particular plant so in this case in india most of the tamarind is collected as minor forest produce true moringa is a leguminous evergreen tree i'm doubtful tamarind tree is endemic to south asia no it is there in many other places now third and fourth fifth statements let us see in india tamarind is collected as a minor forest produce yes india exports tamarind and seeds of moringa yes moringa exports are heavy now seeds of moringa and tamarind can be used for the production of biofuels yes so three four five are the right answers the black cotton soil obviously it comes from volcanic rock with reference to recent developments regarding recombinant vector vaccines because due to covid 19 these recombinant vector vaccines are very much in use genetic engineering is applied in the development of these vaccines yes recombination technology that's nothing but genetic engineering bacteria and viruses are used as vectors so true so you keep the plasmid you change the plasmid in the bacteria all this these are recombinant technologies so recombinant technology itself is something like this in the context of hereditary diseases consider the following statement this is a difficult question for the students now passing on mitochondrial diseases from parent to child can be prevented by mitochondrial replacement therapy either before or after in vitro fertilization of egg these mitochondrial diseases they are very specific they transfer they get transferred through one of the parent i think it is mother and then 
For that, is the, do we have any therapy today? Yes, mitochondrial replacement therapy has come up. And most of these people converting their food which they have took into energy is difficult for them. A child inherits my, micro, mitochondrial entirely from mother, yes. So that is what is the uniqueness of mitochondrial thing. Mitochondrial DNA, it is a single-stranded DNA. This gets transferred only from the mother. So mitochondrial genetic diseases, if mother has, 100% child gets it. So that's why. So answer is both one and two. And then Bolgard 1 and Bolgard 2, these are, what are these technologies? You know, with regard to crops, GM, I mean, uh, GM crops, etc. Obviously, these are related to genetically modified crop plants, Bolgard 1, cotton seeds. In pressure cooker, Bolgard is a warm. We are developing certain seeds again as that. In pressure cooker, the third option, weight of the lid, can be pass, or can be part of this or not is doubtful. We have to see with this. But either 2, 1, 2 or 1, 2, 3 can be the answer over here. This question is again doubtful and debatable. Consider the following. Which of the above can be cultured in artificial or synthetic medium? Viruses are not living beings outside a host. So that's why viruses cannot be cultivated. Answer is 1 and 2 only. Next is, let's go to the seventh question. Adenoviruses have single-stranded DNA. So they are DNA genomes they have for sure. And then, whereas retroviruses have double strand, retrovirus itself, they have RNA from that RNA, it has to be converted into DNA. Then they have to replicate in the human body. Then they have to cause that. AIDS is the virus. So obviously the first statement with regard to retroviruses is wrong. Common cold is sometimes caused by adenovirus, true. Whereas AIDS is caused by retrovirus, true. Next answer is two only. Which can dissolve more substances than any other liquid? Water can dissolve because it is dipolar. With reference to street lighting, so LED versus street lights, what is the difference? Um, in, the sol uh, in the sodium lights or sodium lamps, um, it spreads out 360 degrees. So that's why where you want to exactly focus the light, you don't have. That's why energy efficiency is less. With the LED lights, it focuses exactly on the location where it is required. That's why it appears so bright. So that's the reason why first statement is wrong. And sodium lamps have longer last lifespan. You know, LED lights have the longer lifespan. That second statement is also long, long, wrong. Then obviously answer is three only. AC2, the term AC2 is talked, which in the context of, it is in the spread of viral diseases. Bisphenol A is a cause of concern. It's a polycarbonate which will not disintegrate. This is a plastic. Right, polycarbonate plastic. Normally, today in the roofs also they are using house roofs also this material. Triclosan, considered harmful when exposed to high levels for a long time, is most likely present in which of the following uh, with regard to our, I mean, cosmetics. Triclosan. Which one of the following is the reason why astronomical distances are measured in light years? Again, this is a debate. Answer is between A and D. So, as ours is a federal system, they are a unitary system. And their parliamentary sovereignty is there, here popular sovereignty is there. That's why judicial review exists on any act of the parliament. Both one and two are the answer. This is my domain. I can be the lion now on these areas. With reference to union government, consider the following statements. Here, the second statement is absolutely wrong because Administrative Reforms Commission recommended for Department of Personnel, but it was created under Cabinet Secretariat, not under Prime Minister's office. And the next is, but see carefully, it was kept under the Prime Minister's charge. No, it was kept under the Cabinet Secretary's charge. That's why I have dismissed the second as an option. Gopala Swami Iyengar Committee it came back way back in 1949, and in those days, administrative reforms department is a far-fetched idea. And Gopala Swami Iyengar on restructuring the government, he wanted to bring in less ministries for better coordination. So there is a little chance he might have recommended for this. So that's why I went with two only as the answer. So both are wrong, sorry. Neither one nor two as the answer. But I also kept it as doubtful. Right to privacy, put to Swami judgment, Article 21, you all know that. Next is... Uh, with regard to electoral reforms, um, today a candidate can contest only from two constituencies for Lok Sabha, not more than two. And then the by-election expenditure has to be made by the government, not by the particular candidate if he wins from the two elections. That is the sad state of affairs. So uh, that is, first and third statements are wrong. Second statement is the answer. So this right to city, 
Actually, there are certain rights, human rights, which are called agreed rights on UN Declaration on Human Rights. So the right to city is not an agreed human right. So that's why I have dismissed the one as an option. So then three only, two and three has to be selected. So in Delhi, when slums are being evacuated, so the right to city has come into debate. I remember reading a Hindu article which says that the spatial illegality shall not deprive the basic necessity of a citizen, which is part of the right to city. That is the statement made in that article. So spatial illegality means a colony which is not authorized. So shall we stop giving water to them? Shall we stop giving basic necessities to them? Then under the right to city, either you are an occupant or you are a legitimate person who is staying over there, you are a permanent resident or a temporary resident. Everyone shall have access to the public spaces, basic necessities in the city. That's why I went with the answer two and three. So, but right to city is not an agreed human right. That's why I removed one as the option. Based on that Hindu article, I kept two and three as the answers. With reference to India, consider the following statements. Judicial custody, it means you are under the custody of the court. And if you are to be given to the police for interrogation, court has to give you the permission. So that's why the answer is two only is the right. Court permission is necessary. You cannot take the, I mean, interrogate an individual or take the custody of the individual without the court's permission. With reference to India, consider the following statement. Now, this is about uh, parole rights. Parole means your chance to go and meet your friends and come back to the jail. So the government shall have a guarantee that you will coming back to the prison. So that's where the parole will be given. Not because you have a reason to go. The government also shall have a reason to believe that you are going to come back. And obviously prison laws are being, rules are being made by the states. They vary from one state to other state. So that's why the parole is not a right. It is uh, the discretion of the government to give the parole. So that's why two only is the right answer. Forest Rights Act, under whom it is there? Ministry of Tribal Affairs. And uh, this is 85th question is a debatable. If you see it, for, I mean, what he says is, if parliament is making a law, which is giving lot of administrative discretion, which can lead to misuse, then how it has to be checked? We have to check it through Article 32. That's why Article 32 is the answer. But under rule of law, you are not supposed to give an unlimited authority. Your authority need to be limited. So that's why I am going with the answer C rather than A. So my answer here is C. So though A and C are marked as a caution, my answer is a C over this case. With regard to federalism, what is the most important thing? Independence of judiciary is the most important thing with regard to federalism is concerned. 87th question. What is the best definition of a state? Permanent population and then territory and a central authority to govern. These three are there that is called a state. So answer A fits into that. 88th question, Indian judiciary, any retired judge of Supreme Court can be appointed when workload is more by the CJI with the permission of the President of India. So that is Article 128. High Court has revisionary jurisdiction in India, yes. So both one and two are the right statements. Next is, so that is the 80, I think there is small mistake over here. 88th and 89th question are repeated. Let me change that. Uh, the question has been repeated. So 90th question, which one of the following factors constitutes the best safeguard of liberty in a liberal democracy? Elected government. So both separation of powers and elected government are a safeguard. But among these two things, I will take the elected government. There is no safeguard than the merit of the people or mind of the people. Union, Indian constitution, under the Indian constitution of concentration of wealth violates, or DPSP. 39B, 39C, if you go through that socialistic principles, you can answer this question. The right to property, it is in uh, 300A, you know, 44th Constitutional Amendment Act, removed that and placed under Article 300A. So in that case, it is right available to citizens only and it is a legal right. It's not a fundamental right. So available to citizens only. How I have come to this? Um, because the foreigners, they cannot, foreign citizens cannot buy the agricultural land. They cannot transact on the agricultural land. And then coming to 93rd question, 
original constitution on the day 26th February, 26th January 1950, what are the words which are there? Sovereign Democratic Republic, Socialism and Secularism, these words are added through the 42nd Amendment Act. What is a constitutional government, a limited government? The powers of the government of the day has to be limited by the constitution. With reference to India, the terms Halbi, Hoku, these are all tribal languages. Which of the following statements uh, in respect of Bharat Ratna and Padma awards are right? These are not uh, titles, they are awards. Supreme Court has clearly stated, so first statement is wrong. And second, Padma awards which were instituted in the year 1954 are suspended only once. No, they are suspended twice. When Indira Gandhi came to power after the Janata government and after that in 1990s again it was suspended. The number of Bharat Ratnas are restricted to three per year, not five. So that's why all of them are, I mean, which of the following statements, awards, right or wrong statements they are looking at. So I think they are looking at the wrong statements, then one, two, three are the wrong statements here. Consider the following statements, United Nations Capital Development Fund, this is the wrong. So that particular award, Tree City Award, it is to promote the urban forestry, for promoting urban forestry Hyderabad got. But who gave that award? It is Food and Agricultural Organization, FAO. So that's why the first statement is wrong and the second statement is right. The answer is D. Consider the following statement of World Sports Award, Lawrence World Sports Award. So in this award, who first won that? Tiger Woods won that. And most of the people who have won that, tennis players have won that. The person who has won it most of the time is Roger Federer. Roger Federer. So based on that answer is B only. Sorry, answer is C. Both one and two. Not the, not the racers did not won, win the most of the awards in this. Consider the following statements with 32nd Summer Olympics. Um, the motto, new world, not new world, uh, connected by emotion or some emotion thing is there uh, with regard to that motto. Connected by emotion because of COVID-19, this connected by emotion has come up. That is the motto. So that's why first statement is wrong. Sport, these are the new sports which have been added. That's why two only is right. And the hundredth question, today World Test Championship is given on the basis of points. That's based on the first two statements will go wrong. D is the answer. So the polity questions are relatively easy. Economy, if you are conceptual, then they are also easy. But I mean, with regard to environment and basic sciences, questions are from fundamentals. If you know what is food web and what are the basic things related to your chemistry, physics, etc., in your intermediate, plus one, plus two, that's where you can answer them. My assessment is the, the cutoff will be around 95 to 97, somewhere in between that, 95 to 97. That's where I'm expecting the cutoff. And I wish you all the best. Sorry for the inconvenience. So the power all of a went off and it took some time for them to switch off the generators and restart the studio. So this is what is the key. And I want to make a small announcement for you. Me, Shilpa ma'am, who is an IRS officer, Geeta ma'am in Bangalore, Raj Shekhar sir who went to interview twice, Harsha sir who is from IIT Madras and saw the interviews thrice and who also has guided the ranker 207 and then we have few other officers whom names I cannot announce over here. These are all mentoring the students. Now these people are selected meticulously and each person will be mentoring 10 students. We are going to give you a reading room and it will be open for 24 hours. I will be available for you at least 8 to 10 hours in a day and I will be taking from 10 to 12 students to mentor and we are going to do a meticulous work. Political science, anthropology, public administration, geography, DB Kumar sir will guide in geography optional and then sociology. These are the optionals which we are going to guide because uh, Shilpa ma'am got selected herself with sociology, you know Vikram sir is also there as a faculty. And Ms. Ramya Kirtana went for interview twice with sociology. So because of that, we are going to guide in these optionals. And don't worry about money, we are not going to charge you much. And if I give it for free, then the problem is, the many of the non-serious students also will come in. So I'm going to make it very affordable, somewhere between 3,000 to 5,000 or 6,000. In that somewhere I'm going to keep the fees. You get tests, three months of reading room, and also mentorship under this. There will be tests, mentorship, and we are also starting RRP mains. 
and ready reckoners for mains. All our ready reckoners for prelims are successful. Now we are venturing into RRP mains. We will be discussing those RRP mains issues also for the students in this particular path. I wish to see the serious students in my program. Thank you very much. All the best. We experimented this as a Gayatri campus, which is a much elaborate experiment where 20 students wrote the mains. Out of them, six went to interview. Three got finally selected. So, though ratios appears to be less, but civil services, that itself is very high. That ratio itself is very high. So, getting 12% to 13% result success is very high in UPSC. So, that's where we are repeating that experiment. One of the problem we faced in Gayatri campus is um, optional people or optional teachers, optional guidance, we are unable to give it effectively. So we are starting this in Ashoknagar in Hyderabad and also in Chandra layout in Bangalore. I wish you to join with me. Thank you very much. All the best.